What's going on there guys? Uh, good afternoon. The Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Thursday, December 23rd, 2021, about 12 p.m. That is California time and the latest quake, a 2.9 earthquake at 22 kilometers into Northern California. We have been looking at a trail of deep continued earthquake activity along the Northern California coastline that includes the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone mega thrust area which extends down here into the triple point junction uh, that's what it's better known as uh, the interaction between the uh, Pacific plate here to the southwest and west and the North American plate and the uh, the Gorda Juan de Fuca plate up here in the northern end uh, creating that subduction zone a major seismic hazard in Northern California and the entire Pacific Northwest. That includes areas up here along BC as well. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity, we're seeing a renewed movement along the southern end of that Cascadia megathrust area and some deeper earthquake activity as well. Uh, the reason why I know this is subduction zone earthquakes is because of the depth. You don't see this type of movement along a normal uh, lateral strike transform fault. This is a subduction zone area. Uh, and we are seeing that trail of movement following that 6.2 earthquake that struck uh, just a couple days ago here onto the, uh, looks like the uh, Pacific side of this uh, uh, triple point area. All that movement uh, kind of working its way down in there, loosening things up a little bit, if you will, or tightening things up. However you want to look at it, still building up pressure here into the Northern California region. Uh, if I sound a little different, that's because, uh, well, I'm just, I think I'm just getting better. Yesterday was pretty bad for me. I got some type of horrible cold and I had body fever and, or fever, or not fever, but body aches and headaches and stuffiness and it was not good. I'm feeling better today, but it's, uh, lingering a little bit. Uh, hopefully I'll be back to normal tomorrow. Can't, uh, can't lose my voice. That's for sure. I'll have to be on here with one of the, uh, computer voices, uh, typing out everything that I say. Uh, but anyway, yeah, looking at uh, some further movement, folks, uh, with a, uh, looks like 3.4, couple 3.4s in there over the last 24 hours. Some of those pretty deep as well, about 32 kilometers. This movement up here around 22, 22, uh, looking at uh, just prior to the slippage area. Uh, of course, the further you get here to the east, down dip of the Cascadia, you get into the deeper movement and the trimmer area. Uh, it's kind of a little bit different than the earthquake activity we're seeing further upstream. But then again, further upstream, upstream is where the locked area consists. And uh, that's where it would go, even according to uh, Dr. Lucy Jones. She claims that the earthquake, if it were to happen here along the Cascadia, uh, would occur at the deepest locked level, which would indicate uh, roughly around these uh, depths there for, for the uh, earthquakes. So still kind of watching that. Uh, some activity up into Pacific Northwest. I wanted to check the Canada website real quick and see what it looks like on the northern section of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, that's going to be this plate boundary. Let's go ahead and add those up here. Subduction zone consists here in this region and it looks like there was some activity over the last, uh, let's see what the legend states here, last week or so towards the northern end and around the Prince Rupert area right around uh, the subduction zone here. There's a little earthquake within the last day. Looks like a, uh, a 2.3. So no doubt some uh, further continued earthquake activity along the entire, uh, at least in the northern and southern end of the Cascadia. A tremor activity last night consisted only of a few small events within this zone of the uh, Cascadia. West Coast pressure remains pretty high. We did have an earthquake uh, off the coast of Mexico yesterday, that 6.0. Uh, that was about 10 kilometers, and then we start to see renewed movement into the Gulf of California once again. A 4.5 earthquake uh, kicking things up here at 10 kilometers, and some movement working its way up into the San Jacinto Fault area, where we're seeing a swarm of earthquake activity at the Caltech Palomar Observatory. I'm, I wonder what's going on there, right? That's almost directly underneath their observatory. Let's see what's going on here on the satellite imagery. I don't know if it's going to show it here. Uh, pretty close. I guess it, I'm not for sure exactly where it's at here on the map. Uh, and unfortunately the browser uh, page won't zoom in much like the uh, Google Earth does. So we'll come back and look at that another 
time, but a uh, pretty crazy activity there at the Palomar Observatory. Three kilometers north-northwest of that area. A little swarm of earthquake activity, and that's just over the last 24. We have seen a little increase in activity over the last se uh, several days or so in this vicinity as well. So watching that region pretty closely, it is just off the Eleanor's Fault. See the system that runs right up through here. Uh, Julian section it looks like. San Jacinto Fault area looks active today as well. No swarming down in, in the southern part of the Salton Sea or uh, the San Andreas today, but still watching for further movement along the west coast. Uh, I did take the earthquake watch text down, but I still think we should be on guard with the continued activity, the deeper movement here into the subduction zone of Northern California. Uh, Idaho has seen a revamp or, or a uh, renewed activity along the Sawtooth Fault System with quite a few twos and whatnot kicking up there in that region. Right now, just a little earthquake on the New Madrid Zone coming in, a 2.4 near Tiptonville, Tennessee. Beautiful area out there, but also very dangerous when it comes to the seismic hazard of the New Madrid Zone four kilometers for that 2.4. Also some activity here around the Appalachian Mountains up into West Virginia. Seen a swarm of movement up through here with a couple of twos kicking off. Pikeville, Kentucky and Jackson, Kentucky area seen a couple mid-level two earthquakes. One of those 11.6 kilometers deep. Uh, looking at the rest of the region here, Pacific Plate remains somewhat quiet even though we're seeing earthquake activity here. This is some older movement along the Indonesia area and up here uh, around the Japan region. They had a couple, uh, looks like mid-level fours for the magnitudes, but West Coast pressure, North American plate boundary is the hot area for right now. Just looking at the map here, it's uh, very good to pay close attention to what's going on over here along this area of the plate. We've seen a uh, swarm of movement, not only Northern California, but uh, working this way inland over the last week. So be on guard. Further activity up into the northern part of the uh, Pacific Plate along the subduction zone, uh, better known as the Aleutian Trench area. 106 kilometers for one of these earthquakes, pretty deep subduction zone quake. And some activity ramping up through the Fairbanks area as well. Looking at the Yellowstone movement, uh, pretty quiet, not a whole lot of movement going on whatsoever. A uh, little sporadic, couple small spikes of an earthquake here, looks like on this channel. But uh, overall, there's not anything really worthy to talk about once again at Yellowstone National Park. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. I've uh, got a few things got to do today. Going to be in storm chase mode. We're under a 2% uh, chance of a tornado risk today. So I'm going to be out here with Missy Mimi's, even though I'm sick. I'm going to be out here with Missy Mimi's uh, observing the weather details here in Northern California uh, and looking at that tornado risk here uh, for our region right around the Chico area today. We'll be out there. If something does come up, we'll go live. Uh, and, of course, we'll post it up here on the channel if we get anything successful. Have a good day, folks. We will chat you guys a little bit later.